Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Hi. It's 2021 and everything's gone back to normal. <laughs> well, at least we're back for more primary source image fun here on Bridge from the Past. I'm Mary Patterson, and in this series, we help you decipher primary source visuals that tell the stories of America's past. Today, we're looking at an 1871 political cartoon by the artist Thomas Nast. In the 1870s, Nast's cartoons helped take down a political figure known as Boss Tweed. Looking at his cartoons will help us consider the following question. What is the role of the press in ensuring a democratic republic, like the United States, is functioning the way that it should? To help me with this question, I've brought back my colleague, Liz, all the way from Arizona. Hey, Liz. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this. Of course, are you ready to take down Boss Tweed? I am, and my favorite thing about this is I don't really know a whole lot about Boss Tweed. This is kind of one of those holes in my history, so I'm excited to learn. All right, well, let's jump in. Here is our image, The Tammany Tiger Loose by Thomas Nast, and this cartoon appeared in the magazine Harper's Weekly on November 11th, 1871. Whenever we're confronted with a historic image, we have to just take a minute and observe and try to turn those observations into questions, and from there we can start trying to find answers. So there's a lot going on in this cartoon. So what strikes you, Liz, when you first see The Tammany Tiger Loose? how much damage this tiger has done. I think, I mean, the tiger itself is very prominent in this political cartoon. It's, it's a very scary looking tiger. This is not like cute and cuddly, but even just looking behind and all of the damage it's already inflicted on whatever this is supposed to be representing, that really, to me, stands out. Yeah, and to me, it, it's very reminiscent of like a coliseum or like a gladiator moment. So you can see like these, this tiger is, has its, it's mauled, it looks like a woman. And as you said, there's these two other victims that it's already taken out right here. And there's this huge crowd watching it all. So who is this tiger? Who is this crowd? Who is he or she? I don't know the, the sex of the tiger. Um, who are the victims, right? We have all these questions that it would behoove us for a little bit of context to try to think, think about this. So here are just sort of some essential need to know information that will help us think about this cartoon. So Boss Tweed, so we said in the beginning, Thomas Nass is attacking someone known as Boss Tweed. And he was a political boss and basically in charge of the Democratic Party in New York City. And his seat of power or his headquarters where he and all his, his crooked politician buddies worked was Tammany Hall. So the Tammany Tiger starts to make a little bit more sense. And New York City in the 1870s was, was not really a super nice place. It was extremely crowded, it was very dirty. And Boss Tweed, um, as a politician, worked to address some of these things, but he was also pretty much a gangster. He was very corrupt in a lot of ways. And you can see in this, another political cartoon by Thomas Nass in the bottom right here, he's, uh, he's leaning on a ballot box and isn't counting their his strength. So he was known for, you know, wrecking elections, stuffing the ballot box or fixing elections. He padded receipts so his companies would charge millions of extra dollars to do something and he would pocket the extras. He bribed people. He expected, you know, kickbacks. I'll appoint you to this office in return. You've got to give me money. My favorite example of his corruption is that he opened a, a law office and he wasn't a lawyer, <laughs> but he still charged people legal fees. And he was just, he was incredibly powerful. He was also incredibly wealthy, right? No one to this day, it's still not known how much money he pocketed because he was basically so good at being a criminal. He was also a rather large figure, as you can see in his actual picture in this political cartoon. So this is the person that Thomas Nast is criticizing in the Tammany Tiger. So with that sort of need to know information, maybe we can start diving into the image a little bit more here. I think it's also one thing to note that this is definitely a time where local politics was bigger than national politics. We very much live in a world now where, you know, there's so much media, so national politics tends to take center stage. But when we're looking at this time, those local politics were the big thing. So this is how people like 
you know, boss Tweed got to be as powerful as he was. Right. And he actually, so boss Tweed actually started in Congress, but he decided, you know, local politics is where the action is. So that's where he ends up, you know, making his mark and you can see him. So again, he has that, he was this sort of famous, really large character. There he is in the crowd watching the Tammany Tiger. So we have this imagery of, of sort of like a Coliseum and he's sort of being parodied as the emperor who set this tiger loose on his victims. And the victims, like this one right here, had a, had, was carrying something called the ballot and she was wearing a crown. It's hard to see, but it says Republic. And her sword here is broken as well. So it's almost like what, what you know, Boss Tweed is doing by being so corrupt, he's not, he's, he's attacked the Republic. It's not functioning as it should be. Well, and everybody's just watching. Like, it feels like looking at this, and again, we can only see so many faces, but the crowd seems to be very passive in this and watching. And I think that struck me too, was that everybody's just like, okay, this is the way it is when you're looking at this destruction and, you know, the tiger is attacking things that are key principles for democracy, but everybody just, just like, Meh, whatever, we're just watching. Right. And I think that's another facet of the boss tweed story. That's so interesting is that again, in New York city in the 1870s, he provided a lot of servants services for immigrants, especially, and a large percentage of the population at the time were Irish or German immigrants who had no jobs, no food, nowhere to go. I mean, the city is so dirty, and Boss Tweed attended to those needs. So he had a lot of supporters, but at the same time, he was also insanely corrupt. He says something along the lines of, I don't care who runs for office as long as I do the appointing, and he's counting the ballots. So he's really just he sort of made a mockery of the founding principles of how a government should work. And his tiger, right, the Tammany tiger was the mascot of his headquarters. He's looking right at us, right? He's looking at us as the viewer, almost to say, you know, are we next? So what sort of destruction? He's already taken out, you know, all these, the Republic and the idea of the ballot and free elections. What's going to go next? And I think that it's an important thing, too, when we look at, you know, political cartoons, especially in an era where there was a lot of immigration to the United States and not everybody spoke English, you can read pictures and those definitely mean something. So the question I think that I had was those people that he's helping and that, he, you know, he's helping build this life and they kind of see it as a positive. What do what do they think when they see this? Because, you know, Irish Americans, yes, are speaking English, but German Americans aren't. And again, there's this huge wave. My family came over at this time not speaking English. So if you're to see this, if you can't read the words in the newspaper, you know, what kind of reaction is Thomas Nass looking to get from people who maybe can't read the articles in the newspaper? Right, that's a really great point because there were art, there were actual articles and exposés written about Tweed's corruption, but Tweed actually feared the cartoons by Nast the most for that for that very reason because no matter what your you know your background you can look at this picture and figure out he's doing something shady right it's pretty clear that there's this menacing tiger it's it's killing people it's mauling people that's generally a bad thing, and he actually boss Tweed actually tried to bribe. Thomas Nast and the editor at, Pub at Harper's Weekly to stop with these things because he feared the reaction. And of course, Nast refused the, he refused to, to bribe that. And his cartoons were actually so famous and the depiction of Tweed is so famous that that's ultimately how he's recognized and put in jail for good. So he did act, Thomas Nast does in fact take down Boss Tweed. His images helped bring about the end of this this man who was certainly really corrupt, but again, at the same time, he did provide a lot of services for uh, the immigrant community, especially in New York City. So again, history is never straightforward. There's always many facets, if you think about facets on a jewel, and historians today can still argue about Boss Tweed and the legacy of political bosses like him. So in closing, I wanna take us back to our original question and ask you guys, what do you think 
what is the role of the press, whether it's a political cartoonist like Thomas Nass, whether it's a reporter, whether it's someone on YouTube today, what's their role in ensuring that a democratic republic is still functioning? We'd love to hear from you guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to punch that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. We put out new Bridge from the Past episodes every other Thursday, and we have a lot of other videos to help you with everything U.S. history and government. We've also just released the prompt for our We the Students essay contest. What is the relationship between equality and justice? Here's the essay prompt and all the information on our website. The top prize wins $7,500, and you can see there's lots of other great prizes for runners-up, so definitely check that out. The deadline is April 15th. So thanks again, everybody. Take care. Happy New Year. Liz, thank you again for helping us take down Boss Tweed. Until next time, everybody, take care. Bye, everybody.